Welcome to St. Cass Different Day Podcast. I'm the host, Marta Roland. And I am the co-host. I am Crystal B. The cute one. And make it its debut tonight, the official St. Cass Different Day wine glass. Officially made by Brittany Jones on Facebook. Only two, two of a kind. It's only two, two made. Hey, by, by the way, what's your drink of choice? Mine, I have some tea this evening. We have every, some English tea this every, evening. Everybody who Cheers. knows me know that it is going to be wine. So last week, oh no, I said that not last week. Oh my god, forgetting we do two episodes a week already. But wait, wait, before I get into everything, don't forget to head over to cafepress.com slash scdd podcast to get your official podcast merch. And um, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast YouTube channel. That's a must. Make sure y'all go subscribe to that. And tonight it's a white wine. It's very sweet. I'm not used to drinking a sweet wine this week, but it's very wonderful. Okay, and who's your wine by? Was it made by the Stevie Stephen, uh, Stephen Miller, I think. Stephen Miller. I have a, a chameleon type wine. So oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna mess with it right away. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm just kidding. So no, I have a chameleon tea. It's a good relaxer tea for the evening. Especially because, you know, I'm wearing my teacher's outfit like normal. Oh god. Like I'm a school teacher. Got my tea. Oh, goodness. So, my card again. <laughs> Tuesday on the podcast, we had cover R. Kelly. We had started the Chronicles. We talked about how I was sick and tired of a certain them talking about a certain girl that is missing. And so, my tangent for this episode is that if you do not get a check on the first, I just feel like you should get all Mac to get a day off from life and let the people who get a check on the first have the day. Wait, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, what? what? Do you? You don't know what the first of the month is? Tomorrow's the first of the month, and it irritates me how you cannot get anything done on the first of the month because those are the one time of the month where those people get to go out and spend money. Uh, uh, I'm talking about people who get SSI checks. Oh, I thought, see, businesses <laughs> would be buying stuff up now and waiting for another, like, 20 days. For what? To you know, to buy stuff in a business. You would be like, you'd wait till the end of the month. The point is, <laughs> you don't understand how much traffic be outside and how much people be outside. And then you know what? Now they can get paid up to two to three days early now, which means it just, it's just hectic. I hate the first of the month. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't know if anybody else out there feel the same way. I feel like everybody who does not get a first of the month check should just get a day off from life. The people who do get a, month, a check on the first can just go about their business and do what they need to do, and then we can go back to normal after that. Just saying. Hey, you know what? Okay, as your tangent that you're you're complaining about. So it's my sibling's birthday today, and she is 21. Your sibling? Yeah, my sibling. I thought you had like four of those. No, just one. Just one. Oh, happy birthday! Yay! I mean, she's not really 21. We're just calling her 21. So it's oh. Just like, but it's okay. She's 21. Oh. Just, just, think, just like I'm 34. Oh, goodness gracious. So, <laughs> on, so on the last episode, that was on, that's the only tangent I had, y'all. I'm not going to go on a long ramble like I did that's last That's it? Time. That's nothing else? Yeah, that was it. Not, I just hate the first of the month. Oh. I just hate the first. That's it. Um, Martel, how was your drive to work today? How I didn't you? work today. I was off. Oh, no, I work. off. You yeah. work tomorrow? I'll be at work tomorrow. Yeah, sadly. Hopefully, hoeing at work tomorrow, but we'll see. Look at I'm 28. Look at I'm younger than Martel's right now. Oh, goodness. Yay! So, just to recap, so on the last episode, we had started the Chronicles, and on the Chronicles on Tuesday, we talked about how a certain manager was caught on Facebook with her sister beating up a pregnant chick. Mm. Well, actually, both of them kind of jumped a pregnant chick or whatever. It was like a two-on-one situation. So that's what we talked about on the last episode of the Chronicles. So the build-up to that was, okay, so the girl that they happened to jump happened to work at the same establishment as the manager. And then that girl was actually under that manager at one point. And then the girl and the manager kept getting into it. And then that led to that girl being switched. And then so the manager had that other manager basically just a kind of what's kind of like micromanage and and like 
wrote her up for all kinds of nonsense and stuff to the point where the girl just said, you know what, I'm done. I quit. I, I quit, basically. And <laughs> why are you shaking here? So, so, so like I was saying in the last episode, so that's what led up to, well, on top of that, that the girl who actually worked at the same establishment as the managers. Basically, like I said on the last episode, the sister and uh, uh, the girl basically slept, slept with the same. All oh, this is just over a dirty dude. I'm just going to put it like that. It's all over a dirty dude, some dude with dirty drawers, probably. I'm just going to leave it at that one. <laughs> okay. So well, we have a big establishment like that. Everybody's screwing everybody. Didn't nobody ask you for your two cents, but it's true. I mean, I mean it's, it's I'm true. Just saying, right. I've been, well, I've no, been there before. Well, well no, it, it wasn't. So the manager's sister didn't work for the establishment. Um, this was just a whole outside thing. Hold the fuck on. I'm sorry about that. Crystal was over there on some shenanigans, everybody. But anyways, yeah, so like I was saying, so the girl who basically the sister, the pregnant sister that was beefing with the pre- other pregnant girl, she didn't work as they, they did all didn't work together. Just the girl that they, they got beat up in the, um, the manager. And then after the whole situation, when the girl had got beat, it got jumped by the manager and the and this is allegedly happened to so make sure i put that in there allegedly happened um after the girl got beat up by the manager and the, the pregnant sister the girl actually brought the video up to the manager's place of work and gave it to you know the higher ups and this girl was somehow able still to keep her job after we're told what we do outside of work even though we're not on the clock it still represents the company and we can get fired Holy mo! I mean, that's just it, crazy. I mean, to I mean, you guys understand that when I'm when I'm in the uniform, I mean, being I'm in management, that I have to be professional at all times. But when I'm outside of work, I don't talk, interact about work. I just keep it to myself. Yeah, but yeah, that was the whole chronicles on that part two. Well, the next part of the chronicles, we're gonna be talking about what somebody did, what a manager did, will was paying for. On the next Chronicles, which will be on Thursday, next Thursday, will be on that episode. So make sure y'all tune in for to that. <laughs> and then the following episode after that, we're gonna be talking about the sperm donor. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a lot of mess that that be going on. I'm just gonna put that out there. And I, I talked to the sperm donor. He knows sperm donor knows his code name. I'm not gonna put his real government name on the podcast, but I had talked to him about it, and uh, he knows that it's gonna be on the podcast. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot going on. Speaking of, um, is, is that someone someone that uh, I know by chance? No, you don't know the sperm donor. Okay. Um. So, oh my God, I'm having a brain fart because there were. Oh, there we go. Are y'all ready for the House of Gucci movie? You know, you know, yeah. you don't know. Lady Gaga is starring. It's supposed to be coming out, uh, I believe, thanks Thanksgiving. Is it gonna be in theaters or is it gonna be on like TV? In theaters. Well, I mean, you do have the option. Like HBO's got some connection with a lot of the new movies now. You can watch HBO Max. Which is uh, yeah, but I think because I think they didn't sell this to uh, to a, a streaming service, so this is going directly to theaters first. Yeah, when did it come out? October. What? It's, it's come out Thanksgiving, and it, and it's based on a true story, and it's going to be starring Lady Gaga. So I'm so excited. Anything Lady Gaga, you would do, but she is that she she. she everything so i would definitely will go see it but she was actually good in the stars born so uh-huh. and then i forgot to talk about this on the last episode but i don't know about you wrestling fans out there um there's this one man uh oh my god this man about old as dirt uh i don't i believe it was Aaron anderson is his name and so there was a spot that was supposed to happen in a match that this man completely ruined. So 
basically he was standing on one side of the apron for those of you watching our video he was standing on one side of the apron and he was go around the ring post and walk he realized he was on the wrong part of the apron so he tried to go around the ring post and when he went around the ring post he fell on live tv <laughs> <laughs> so the wrestlers are like in the ring trying to prolong the spot that's supposed to happen but then this man is like already like 70 some years old so he's doing the slowest climb to get back up onto the ring <laughs> to stand in the spot that he's supposed to stand in because the whole point was that the wrestler is supposed to get up off the ground and they're supposed to throw one of the wrestlers into him and then he get knocked off the apron but then when they did the spot, he still did not even fall. Oh my, he just was like a, a like it looked like one of those old people when they just fall and they can't get up. Like he needed a life alert. That's literally how it looked. I'm like, who thought this was a good idea to put a 70 year old in this kind of situation? Like it, it the I'm a, the video. I'm a, it, it should be on my my Facebook page. Maybe go check it out, y'all. It's it was some of the funniest botches I have seen this year so far. All right, Krista, how was your week? My week's been good. Um, just dealing with sick people at work. Sick people at work? What happened with people at work? Um, well, I had like a coworker, new trainee that had the flu bug, the stomach flu. That was it, neat. Ooh, that sounds so, nasty. And I'm get tested. I'm get tested to make sure if it's the cold, the flu, or, you know. The Rona! It's C nineteen, the Rona. It's C nineteen, so it was not. It was just he just had a stomach flu. It was just a, just the standard flu. So I'm like, thank goodness. So it's been good. I've had a pretty easy day today. Tomorrow, it'll be gonna gonna take over for someone who's taking a vacation day. So, no worries. That's okay. I don't mind. So um, I need to know if they had a conclusion to the story. Did they find that man that's been running from from that that killed his girlfriend? Because I, I know I told you on the last episode, I'm tired of hearing about it because I just feel like, huh, can we just get the conclusion? Well, we already got the conclusion already, basically. So, so is he still on the run? So, yes, he's still on the run. Oh, and, God damn it. And to tell you the truth, his parents, listen to this, originally scheduled a campsite for his parents and him September 3rd, which was Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then canceled it. Hmm? So they wonder if maybe they were they were all behind this plot, not just the not just the Brian. Um, I can't remember his last name now. The one that killed Gabby. Oh, um, I, I don't I don't know the girl name. I was just like I'm yeah, just so over it. Gabby Potato or some of that, you know. So yeah, we're probably looking at this wrong way, but um, yeah, that's sad that. You know, that, that pretty much she, you know, yeah, she lost her life. But you know what's funny, though, is they found someone else from um, another state that was also had a body there in that same area. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's kind of, it does make it a little, like, questionable. Is there something going on over there? Like, some kind of, oh, Brian Landry, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Who knows um, what's going on at this point with that? You kind, of, you kind of wonder, did someone just go psycho or was there some kind of demonic presence or does this person, yeah, they just off their rocker altogether that just. Maybe it was related to old Yeller. <laughs> oh, jeez. I feel like uh -huh. when people do things like that, it's always. It's a motive to everything. It's true. Mm -hmm. Like, people are just not going to just freak out for no reason or go kill somebody for no reason. It's the reason behind everything. And I do believe that. I don't so know. What, what was your motive for that dead body you know, behind person. your house? What? You were having a dead body behind your house, not me. Not by me. Ain't no dead body but behind anyway. my house. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ain't no behind my house. I I don't live in a but man. I feel like the people <laughs> they go through things. And sometimes people just snap, and people mental illness is real. And sometimes you just freak out, and I feel like sometimes it, it ain't mental. Well, yeah, if you kill somebody, you meant to do it. 
Because you're smart enough to stop yourself. And they didn't believe in the power of the Christmas what, tree. I don't know what they had going on. I don't know those people. I don't know what they've been going through. So but I hope her family get justice and we hope the family get justice. We hope we ca- they catch the bastards. They can finally stop talking about it on the news. And it's going to be the last but, time you hear about it on this podcast. That, but did he really do it, though? I don't know at this point. All I know is that they need to stop talking about it like it's world news still. Okay. The girl was missing. Y'all found the girl. Y'all did the autopsy. Y'all found out she's murdered. The boy missing. The boy must be missing because he did it. Plain and simple. End of question. We can, they can move on. It's other missing people out there who are still missing. Uh, a lot of black people who was missing, like I said on the last episode, there's a missing girl, or a Milwaukee girl who was missing. Black kids are missing. There's a Milwaukee girl that is missing, and, and oh, yeah, your internet is horrible, so you need to like hold on, um, because it's saying you have bad connection. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's a local girl that's oh, missing, and it has not even been reported news. Y'all talking about this Gabby girl instead of the girl who's the local girl who's missing that y'all haven't even talked about on the news, so. Yeah. Remember, remember the, the Alexis Patterson story? Mm-hmm. Like, they still haven't found her, and it's been like how many years? 22. Like, yeah, like <laughs> over 20 years, and they still ain't find that girl. And. All um, right. So, moving on to another story, because it's that time of year where we, I guess, where the talk is out about what's going to happen at a certain show coming up in February. And that show is the Super Bowl. So, according uh-huh. to Fox News, uh, Super Bowl 2022 halftime show is, uh, is supposed to be lined up with Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. I feel like it's going to be trash. That is going to be so trash. I'm sorry, but Mary is and Mary trash. is at I'm that sorry, point. I don't her, want to see them. Mary is at that point in her career where she needs to start using backing tracks. Okay. The only way I want to see Mary is if she got on them boots. <laughs> True. If Mary ain't got on them boots, then I show up because Mary be clowning in them boots. I don't want to see Dr. Dre. I well, you know, Dr. Care. Dre part, and Eminem part gonna do do that song. Uh, nowadays, everybody will talk like they got something to say, but then it comes out they gonna do that song. I can't remember that, that, song. That, that. That song was like thirty years ago. I don't care about that song. Anymore. All of them are, all these artists are old and stuff for Kendrick Lamar. So what you expect is gonna happen? But I, I heard a rumor like last week that Rihanna was supposed to do the halftime show, and I was just so geeked about it. And then when I seen it on Facebook today that Fox did that, I was so disappointed. I don't. Want to see? I don't think Clean Rihanna Bowl. is. I don't think Rihanna is really <clears throat> interested in doing the Super Bowl or music period right music. now. Her fashion show is everything, but I ain't gonna. But, besides the point. but yeah, that half fashion show is gonna suck. I I feel like they should have went in a direction of, I would say at least early 2010 hip hop artists, because at least that era of mu- hip hop was still kind of okay to listen to compared to now if they were going to go that route or they should get like a star study like a uh, queen of pop music um lineup with it like a whole bunch of like different pop artists i think they did that already or they could have did with like with people like um um like uh like what if, what if like justin bieber jojo you know some of those people teamed up and did a halftime show I'm here for JoJo. I think Justin Bieber would do a, like I like I think if like Jonas Brothers, Justin Bieber, people like JoJo, you know, a lot of them people like something we haven't seen before did the halftime show. I would have been okay with that. Hell, they even could have yeah. got Green. They could have got Green Day. They like how they how Green Day and um, what was it? Green Day and I can't remember the other name. Uh, Fall Out Boy did the did Summerfest together. They could have Green Day and, mm-hmm. and Fall Out Boy do the halftime show, and I would have been happy with I, that. I believe the, didn't the Fall Out Boy do it before when they were up there with like Aerosmith or something like that. 
Uh, I don't know. They never done it as a song, like as as they own act. It was like them featured on somebody else. Oh, yeah, I, mean, they, I think they were. Yeah, I think there was a main feature, and then yeah, they just did kind of. I mean, yeah, but I think like a Green itself. Day, a Green Day, Green Day, Fallout Boy, and maybe uh, if they did like a mash with uh, Amy Lee from Evanescence for the halftime show. Or, I think that would have been high. Right. I mean, yeah, but it's gonna be hard to have that set up with both bands, different bands on the stage at the same time. Like, who's gonna pay all that money? Because you know, a lot some of these artists, been... some of these artists pay for their own stage and stuff and setup and all the extra stuff that goes on. They only get us like Fox only give them a certain a, a certain budget. Anything past that budget, they gotta pay out of pocket. It, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they don't even get paid, they don't even get paid to perform. No, it's free publicity. I, I, just, for them. I just I just found that out. Like, I thought they got paid for that. Like the Super Bowl NFL pay for everything, like all their stage equipment, all that. They don't get paid for it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but for publicity, they already famous and they already know the song. So why is it people publicity? They because sometimes shit. they could be it could be an artist who are in a later years and want to become relevant again. Or it could be that that artist is promoting something, a new album coming out, or um, I think after Beyonce did hers, then she announced like a world tour, like the Mrs. Carter show world tour, or something like that. So there's always something they're promoting afterwards for uh for at, the, at when they do the Super Bowl performance. And then some of them is just more. some of them is just the fact that they can say, Hey, I did the Super Bowl halftime show. Have Mariah Carey ever done it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah Carey do it. Uh no. She'd be, she'd be in her ball gown and butterflies flying everywhere, but it'll be lovely. I'm just I saying. mean, yeah, I, I but it's hurt if she did it like with maybe Justin Timberlake, maybe. Justin Timberlake already did his show though. He he, he was, was he did it and he was trash. Like I didn't like it. And, Sorry, Justin uh, Timberlake, but I didn't like the performance, even though he's a Packers fan. Oh my god! So I'm trying like to think, like who else would be a good, a good, uh, Clapper people? Who's a good fit? Do you think will be for the Super Bowl halftime show? Britney Spears. Britney Spears. <laughs> Britney, and she she's done it already. Although she she didn't do it as a solo act, but she has. Really? She has done it before. <laughs> Speaking of Britney, until we get an answer from the Clapper yeah, people, Anthony. your your internet is going bad again. So, speaking of Britney Spears, she's free, everybody. Well, her dad is no longer her conservator anymore. Yay! So, uh... She's free. Her, she's free. Yes, she is. Like, I am over the moon. So, but uh, a rep for Jamie Spears, which is her father, caught the removal a loss for Britney. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna need you to connect to Wi Fi or something because you're you're showing in the in the red. It is. Um, I, my phone, my screen is everything. I don't see anything wrong with my. Screen. Yeah, you look real digital. Um, no. So, so we have no answers on that. So, no one has has. Said I mean, okay, okay, I think we're right. <laughs> Um, it better. It's all right. Um, it would be nice to see like a full Destiny's Child Super Bowl halftime show. Like if they were to come that out with another be- album, I think that'd be like the perfect way to kick off a reunion tour. Mm-hmm. Is a Destiny's Child Super be- Bowl halftime show. That would be everything. I will live and then that. and then they bring out Latavia and Latoya. They can leave Farrah in the dust wherever she at. Because I don't even know if they have to concede. Ooh. But <laughs> hey, I, I, who is there? I don't know her. <laughs> but if they bring out Latavia and Latoya too, when they do like the say my name and bills and stuff, like that would be the shit. That would, and that would be that'll bring that'll bring so much hype. It really would. See, somebody wants them to get back to. Yeah, I think Crystal probably wants to see somebody like Patty LaBelle or uh, well, I would live for Patty. Well, what idea do you like have, Crystal? Well, I'll tell you what, it depends, depends on who'd be available. I mean, Tina Turner would be a good one. She's like 80, she can't, she's not gonna be able to do anything. 
we just had the discussion of the night, but okay. <laughs> Um, let's see who another one is. Um, hmm, I'm trying to get another good, good artist. <laughs> you know, artist that would actually be a good. I mean, a lot of mine are. You know, like would they if they did do like a legend show, like for the legends that still like would they have like Anita Baker, Stevie Wonder. Um, oh yes, Stevie Wonder. Oh, I'd love to see Patty Labelle. Yeah. Like, what if they have them do a halftime show? Yeah. Say, yeah. say they did a. Um, Stevie. Yeah. It did they they did a, a like a um seventies revival thing and did it all like yeah like a, like like, like a like a seventies Motown theme yeah. like Super Bowl yeah. halftime show yeah. like I think maybe I'll bring Diana Ross they, into they, the mix yes oh definitely they did oh, the, definitely. They, they, they did that already they did the, they did a whole Motown theme already they did that in like the nineties with Diana Ross was on there and Stevie Diana, Wonder but, no, and, but but then that the, I'm talking about to bring it back now. Yeah, but no, nobody because with the which with streaming, no. that's like introducing this newer generation to a whole new genre of music, yeah, and they yes. and they realize that a lot of the music that they hear on the radio now is made by them artists. You'd be I mean, great. It's so I mean, it'd be so perfect because then everyone can actually see those people. You know, the people that actually made the music for Motown when it actually was like they were hits. They were the. It was like the hottest thing in radio. Uh oh! What? I did something with the screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Sorry. So I think it'd be great to bring it back and let everybody hear. By all means. Yeah. I feel like do like a like but, a girl group. But mm -hmm. then and then if they do do that route the with like the seventies Motown, you could add in some of today's artists with it to give it that new sound and flavor to it. Like to be honest. I would love to see um, one, two people, even if I know this probably would never happen, but their voices are so amazing. Uh, will be Nick Jonas and Charlie Puth. But if they were to do the halftime show together, I think those two voices together, whether they was doing soul music, pop music, gospel, rock, whatever they decide to do, they voices go with anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be an awesome show. That's, they should tour together. That'd be an awesome tour. Or I feel like give, give me like, or give me like Ariana Grande, Kelly Clarkson, um, who else? Uh, I feel name? like a Kelly Clarkson. Um, Kelly Clarkson now is boring. No, I'm saying with them together, like not just by herself. Like give me Kelly Clarkson, Ariana Grande. But the uh, thing, what's the, the thing Adam? is, like Kelly, I watched. I don't know when was her last concert or something. I was watching or a clip or something. Her voice after it, it tires out fast now, and I feel like Ariana was just out seeing her during that he whole thing. Yeah. It just be a screaming match, and I don't, I don't yeah, think that's something I want to like, hear. Ariana, uh, wait, hold on, wait. But damn it, we need a good uh Super Bowl halftime show. I I can't think of. Because the last, I think like the last two years, the, the Super Bowl halftime shows have sucked. Like, I don't know, did we, I, did I ever talk about uh, what's his name halftime show? The weekend? Oh my god, it was terrible. That was the most boring thing. And then he, they said he spent millions of dollars on his own performance for the Super Bowl, and I'm like, that was shit. Horrible. It was horrible. I couldn't. That's something I can't. I just I can't with him with that Super Bowl halftime show. And then the year before him, I don't even know who did it. The year before him, that's just how unmemorable it was. I think it was Justin Timberlake. Oh no, it was Jennifer Lopez. And then <laughs> <laughs> it was Jayla. Was it was. It was Jayla. Was it Jayla this past year? Was it Jayla this year or last year? Jalen Shakira did last year because it was a little COVID shit. Yeah, they did so they, last year. They, they, they so they did. So so it was the weekend this year. Then the one that just happened this year. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Jalen did. They did 2020. Oh yeah, because yeah. Lady Gaga did the Pepsi the Pepsi show before the day yeah. before, and she told them no lip syncing, and they did. Um. Uh, hold on. Wait a minute. Don't do Shakira. She didn't lip sync. She did. No, I don't care. It was it was everything. <laughs> but any, I love I, I love Shakira. I don't and J Lo. We have the same birthday. 
Don't do neither one of them. Whatever. Give them their props. That show was everything. It, I'm not saying I mean, it, was it was a bad good. halftime show. It wasn't, as you can see, I didn't even remember it. I mean, I'm not saying it was a bad was halftime a show. I just, I just didn't remember it. I'm sorry. It just wasn't that much. It wasn't memorable. It was memorable for me, and I love it. I mean, everybody has different things, so I actually like it. But you even forgot that it happened. Exactly. No. <laughs> yes, you did. So, that don't mean I didn't like it though. <laughs> I'm not saying I didn't like it. I'm just saying it wasn't memorable. <sighs> I, and I really want to see Mariah Carey, but I really do. I think I feel like she needs to do one. Um, I don't think that they, does Fox don't have enough money for Mariah Carey's budget for <laughs> a Super Bowl. <laughs> Well, all she needs is a ball gown and some butterflies. One of her gowns alone will probably cost about ten million dollars. The whole, the whole lighting and the stage production. Because you, she got to have a certain, she got to have a certain kind of lighting. She can't be seen in certain lighting, so she have a certain kind of lighting. Uh, then you got to pay for her dancers and then all the extra stuff to go along with it. I don't, uh, yeah. Because Lord knows she ain't gonna dance, but okay. You don't know that. Who is knocking on stuff? Y'all so ghetto. My hand is right here, and I'm holding the phone. So Crystal, be... is you over there doing what I think you're doing? You're there being asked. Who you got over there up under your desk? Let me find out. Who's hmm. under your desk, Crystal? Who are you over there hoeing with, Crystal? Nobody's there. Everybody, Crystal is over there hoeing during the podcast. Uh, no. <laughs> don't you? Don't, 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 don't you try to act all innocent. <laughs> Don't you try to act innocent? Look, look at her. Still trying to act innocent. So you're going to play this innocent role. Okay. Uh, trying to hold that composure. Okay. I, I see how I see how we're doing. So, with Britney Spears, how do y'all feel about that? Well, Crystal, how do you feel about that? You know, I'm, I'm really happy that she's actually able to instead of someone controlling her, especially her father. I mean, it was fine when she was recording stuff, but she hasn't actually done any major stuff in the last few years. And I believe that she's, you know, to me. She just put an album out. Okay, first of all, she had an album out with one, with one radio single that nobody heard after two weeks. So we wouldn't call okay, that a sexual success. You just don't be worried about everything being on the radio. She got an album out. Okay, I, I get it. She had an album out and it came out late last year. But Crystal, did you know she had an album that came out last year? I did not know that. Proves my point. Are you a are you a Britney Spears fan? I'm not a Britney Spears fan, but I knew that it was an album that came out last year. But no, you, no, you didn't. I have to tell you. No, you didn't. I did tell you. You didn't even know. <sighs> Whatever. Oh. Knock it off. Anyways, so, Crystal, continue. Uh, so, um, as I was rudely interrupted by a producer. I will tell you, I will tell you that, I mean, she was really good in the 90s. I'm happy that she actually has her own freedom to be able to own her own, you know, her premise. You know, even though I understand that you still go through a music company to produce your albums and your music, you know, regardless if you sing it or not, whatever. Mm -hmm. but I'm happy that you don't have to deal with her father dictating everything about her, which to me, I think would have thought by 25 years old she would have probably got her own lawyer got away from her parents you know her father her parents you know running everything. how old is britney is she like almost 40 or in her 40s it's like 39 or 40 britney, something like that. Yeah. um i mean it's so it's nice to know that she has control over her life now and her own finances uh, she doesn't have her father making all those choices for her. But the thing is that conservatorship can always go back into effect if she don't if she can't prove that she's competent enough to handle her own finances. That's true. Yep. So she, I think I think this is going I think this whole thing right now is going to be like a trial period to see how she handles herself without really having that person controlling everything. I believe she can. She's been trying to do this for the longest, and I believe she's old enough now 
and I believe she can. She's been through so much. Really knows what to do and what not to do. And then she, even though she let her her daddy not in the church no more, she still kept some people on the team with her that could still help her. I like, mean, I think it was like I think it was her, the, the assistant or something like that. Somebody, I think she was an assistant, and she kept her. And she's been her like she's been there since the beginning. So she's she's gonna do it. I got faith in me. I know she can. I'm just asking. I, I mean, know. but the thing is though, it's been what she's been under this conservatorship for over ten years now, where she hasn't had control over any finances. So who's to say that she's going to make the right decisions during that time period? Because I mean, you got to think, most of her children's life, her father has had control over her finances. Majority of her kids' lives. And even her kids are like, don't really, I don't even think her kids like their daddy, but it, it, it's going to be a big adjustment because now the kids don't have to go to, to grandpa to get money and they can go to go to mom. Who says to say mom is going to be like, here, here's $4 million to go blow or, or that kind of stuff. And then she already, has, then she already agreed. She hasn't been touring. She stopped touring. She stopped the Vegas show. She stopped all of that stuff. So she don't have, she don't have that income coming in from all them shows that she was doing. Well, I appreciate she still has plenty of money. And her kids do not. But like her daddy blew a lot of money going fighting her over this conservatorship. Though he was spending her money, he wasn't spending his money. He spent millions of her money. I know that. <clears throat> so she, he. Gonna, so not only. So not only was that money taking care of Britney and Britney kids, it was taking care of her dad too. Her dad was living off that money. Oh, yeah. So. It was. It's like it's no telling how much money she actually has left. I do feel like she's gonna do something major. Like I feel like she's gonna do some kind of tour or something because she just put the album out. So I feel like she. I, I really feel like a tour is coming. Oh, that I did. I mean, her tour. I mean, she could still tour, but at this point, she had to come out with a whole new album to go on tour because that album came and went already. She has she has millions of fans. Like I mean, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying like I mean I'm not saying that she can't tour, but I'm like I'm like like if you're basing it off that last album as the reason to tour, like no. No, I'm I'm, like 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 I said, like like I said, I'm not saying she can't tour, but when most artists go on tour, they have some type of new material to perform while they're on that tour. So it's like she gonna have to come out with something where it don't even have to be a full album. It could just be like an EP with ten, five or ten songs or something on there. It just needs to be something new to add to the show. She just had the new album. The album is came out the album is nearly a year old, and by the time they get through planning the tour, planning out the arenas, getting the dates, hiring the staff, which is all that is still coming out of her pocket because when she goes on tour, she's paying for every person that's working on that tour the state does the I mean, record label nobody's paying for that britney is paying for that herself which means you got to buy and then out, if you don't want to pay for all that yeah. stuff out of pocket you got to get your sponsors and like i said like i said you gotta make sure dirt everything is rented out properly you gotta make sure you got somebody running the merchandise stand. you gotta make sure somebody's doing a lot of stuff mm-hmm. and then which all that stuff take time like it takes like some of these artists they spend a year a year and a half planning a tour if depending on how big the production is. She might be doing it now. We don't know. That's what I'm saying. She, that's what I'm saying. Like, if she, like, I'm like, by the time she does go back on a tour, hopefully she has some new material to take on the road with her. So, like, like even, like, Lady Gaga, oh. last year she came out with the album with Ariana Grande on there, and then now this year she put out a remix album, and then on top of that she just put out another jazz album. So now when she goes on tour, she has more material to work with. But Britney got years of material to work with. She, I'm not, she I'm not, do that album. I'm not saying that she got to just do that. I'm not saying they go on tour. I know they just don't do that one album. What I'm saying is when people go out on tour, fans want to at least hear something new. There's always something new when somebody goes on tour. There's at least 
one new song or one new something or it's a new cover song. It's always something new when they go on tour, unless you somebody like Patti LaBelle and just say, or Anita Baker and just be like, fuck it. Anita Baker can't even sing her own high notes no more. She had her background singer do that now. But the point is, with younger, with Mariah can she Mariah use uh, playback, okay, and then she can still hit some of her own high notes, at least t- attempt to. Anita Baker don't hit none of hers. Anyway, like I said, it's always some new, some type of new material to it. But, I mean, let's be part of the album. You don't need a tour six months later. Like, that's not what Beyonce No, you put, out the, the you put out the you put out the album around the same time you're about to go on tour. All that stuff is yeah, playing together. Yeah, all that stuff is playing out. together. And a year later, Beyonce does the Beyonce That's what I'm saying, like, album. By the, was a year later. They're like, I'm saying, no, no, Beyonce put out an album and within two months, two to three months, she's on tour. Mm-hmm. So, oh. well, that's because that's just the way how it goes. Like, they put the album out, and then once the album come out, within two months, they're on tour. At least within two months, they're on tour to promote the album because when they put the album out, they're not really making money off of streams. Like, it's, it's okay money. But they're not really making money because there's so many people. Once that album is bought and people stream it, it's only so much money that artists make off the money. The artists really don't make money unless they go on tour. So that's why they don't go on tour until the album is out. Around the set. So that way they can promote the album, which means more streams that the artist is getting while they're on tour. But she really couldn't do anything because she was going through that, that shit. So I know. Now, that's what I'm saying. Like now, that's what I'm saying. Now, within his free time, she probably been recording new material and now can go on tour with new material to take out on tour. And then she could so. be, uh, th- and then this way you can see a more freer. What I'm saying is, she need a new, she need new material to show this free Britney. Like I said, like the past, like all the past stuff that we got of Britney, that's Britney that's, that was locked under control. That a Britney that was controlled. The music was controlled. This is a Britney where oh. I have control of everything, Britney, which means Britney needs to have that music to go with. I'm in control of everything. Like I'm that bitch now. That's the that's why Britney needs another album in order to go on tour to be that I'm that free bitch Britney now. That comeback album, like look at me, bitch. Right. That's what that's what she needs. Cause because the like the last oh geez, it's been a while since she had a I think because the last time where her album was really popular, it was right with the one with Toy Soldier and Work Bitch and all of that era. That was the last time you better with the women, you better work bitch. Like that was her last like real popular album. Like she had other stuff yeah. after that, but it was like eh, it came and went. So it's like it's like Britney need to put out that album where I'm like, I'm free, I'm here. Bitch, I'm taking over. I don't care if I am in my 40s. This is my moment. I'm free and I get to do what the fuck I want to do. I can tell you one thing that circus tour, <laughs> that motherfucker was everything. But what we need to do, that Crystal, uh, 98 Degrees, I think is going to be playing in uh, Oshkosh. We might need to go. Yes, they actually are play, playing, I think, in March. No, it's in it's uh, October. It's October something. So I mean, I'm okay. Speaking of like comeback concerts, okay, I'm going to the Millennium Tour this month. Who cares? They don't. None of them have new material. Okay, first of all, first of all, none of them are are signed to a record label. Maybe Omarion. That's about it. None of them are really signed to a record label anymore. None of them doesn't have a record label. Uh, Shati is independent. That's why she she's paying to have her she's paying to re-record her first album on his own and re-record her first album for it to be on streaming services. So nobody, no record label is gonna pay for Pretty Ricky because a lot of them people like they gonna need they need a record label to back them up. That's on a millennial tour, and right now there's no record label that's willing to back them up right now. Because right now it's like to produce a Pretty Ricky. Or a Bow Wow. Like, Bow Wow ain't been hot since Fresh As I Am is, first of all. And, like I said, like, no no, no, no record label is willing to make that investment and lose money on the people that's on a millennial tour. 
for an album that's probably not they, they, they drop for them one all them drop for album it probably won't even sell twenty five thousand. That'd be a loss to them. Like I feel like the only one that will sell will probably be a Marion by himself. Um, that's it because you got the Yin Yang Twins, which was. Like I said, that's what I said. Like a lot of them artists, like they, that's what I said. Like they are, they not gonna have new material because once again, no studios gonna pay for it. And like I said, a lot of the, and a lot of them artists on the tour, besides the Yang, Yin Yang Twins, is probably the only ones who actually wrote their own music. But a lot of them don't even write their own music. So, but the, but the tour is to just bring back the older music that we, if they actually came out with. It's not to for show new music. It's the Millennium Tour, like. Back I mean, yeah, the, I get their, it. Their shit the beginning. I get it. Like you said, you're going on That's tour, but then, I uh, then, but then, like a lot of people that I know, they like they was like, damn, I regret buying this ticket now because I don't even want to go. Like a lot of people who got tickets are not even going no more. Especially because I want. I mean, I actually listen to only all of them except for Bow Wow. I listen to like B2K, Amari, uh, definitely Ashanti, Pretty Ricky. Number one, like their first album. I ain't gonna say what happened to that album, but yeah, but yeah, so I, I mean, like I say, yeah, a lot of people can do comeback tours, like New Kids on the Block did a comeback, but at least they had a comeback single when they came back because Neo wrote some music for them when they did a comeback. And nobody cared about it though, actually, because actually, actually, Backstreet Boys and New Kids on the Block went on tour together and they so sold out stadiums around this world. Huge! Oh my god! Uh, they, I, I they, they, they had it on TV. I was They're, jealous that I wasn't there. Crystal, we and you should have went. It actually came on TV like um, I think on the um, I forgot what cable channel it was. It was like Flex. I don't know, but they actually played the tour, the whole little concert tour on that channel. I would I have watched it. I would have Crystal next to me, like Crystal, throw your panties on stage. <laughs> Crystal, throw your bra. <laughs> right, Crystal, show me your titties. <laughs> right, <show me. laughs> we need to go to a concert together. Oh, my goodness. Oh, speaking of, I'm so, because I don't know how much time we got left. Um, I'm, 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 I'm checking it. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, my God. So, probably, so they, they decided to do Pride Fest this year in October, which I don't know why they just couldn't just postpone it to next year because it's gonna be cold as fuck on the lakefront and on some of the summer fest brown out on summer fest ground at pride fest in the fucking in october but then on top of that i'm looking at some of the performers i'm like this is just like a repeat of like two years like two three years ago it's that they added jada see. jada essence hall or something like that to her, i think that's her name to the lineup but other than that it's like it's all the same like like they got big frida i was like damn i'm so sick like big frida again how many times are y'all gonna get big frida to perform like it's big frida that broke that she about to come to wisconsin and be on the fucking lake performing in the cold like really frida came two years big frida came two years in a row and jay dessence hall is from milwaukee and she won season 12 of drag race I know that. I'm just saying, like, they didn't add really anything new to Pride Fest to pe- make people be excited and like, oh, yeah, let's go to Pride Fest. It's October, but like, it's not a reason for me to go to Pride Fest because I'm looking like, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, uh, what the fuck is her, his name again? Big Frida. Her, his, her, whatever. Her, I don't know her pronoun, his pronouns but, are. But Big, but, but big Frida out uh, new music, though. Big Frida got putting music out. And I would love, I mean, I've seen Big Frida two years ago. I mean, but. Five. I mean, but at the same time, like, it's what the way how Big Frida performs is old. It's the same shit. Like you just up there twerking, and and, and it's the same shit. But like, it, it, like it, eventually, a lot of these, a lot of uh, like a lot of artists that keep re- redoing the same stuff over and over. Like I don't like look like Crystal. I don't know if you know who Lizzo is. Mm-hmm. Like even though she's a big girl, I gotta give her respect. When I see her perform, it's always something new and different. When she does her performances, she don't hair, care. Her no, it's not even that. It's 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 real creative. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But then, now, but now I've been problem. watching Megan Thee Stallion perform for the last two years. And it's the same damn twerking in every the, during the whole damn show. I I, I think Lizzo. Let me, let me, let me, I, 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 you sound staticky. I I think oh, yeah. Lizzo has her own little style going. 
and I like that. Uh huh. Megan. I mean, uh, you know, another. I don't know, just another. I mean, I don't understand. Megan is a good performer, but it's like after a, after a while, it's gonna be like, okay, girl, what did you gonna bring new to keep your our attention? Like even like even with Beyonce, even even people. like with Beyonce after a while when she was doing like when she performed, she been performing crazy in love for twenty years, and probably about what the within the last five years she switched up the choreography and she started adding stuff new to it. Like you got to do something, add do something. Switch it up. You gotta add something new. Although you're performing the same songs, you gotta add something new to the element when you're doing them over a certain amount of time. And then for me to watch Megan, Megan Thee Stallion, some of her performances over the last what two years that she, two three years that she's been on mainstream, it's been like, okay, when are you gonna bring something new? See, I, I believe she will. I will not. When I seen her at Summerfest. It was actually a great show. like, like, like. I, mean, I like yeah, the I mean, fact that, that now music, that she uses but... the uh, she has like the screens in the background now to like kind of bring a new element to the shows compared to some of her older ones that I've seen. So like, you could tell that she spent a little money on the stage setup. But like for me, for artists like Megan Thee Stallion, I would love to see her with a live band. I don't want to see. I like that's the reason one of the main reasons why I don't go to rap concerts because. I can just listen to your album. I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay to watch you twerk and walk and walk back and forth, basically rapping to the album. I don't want to see that. I mean, but it, but if you, if you rap in margin in a live band, like what a live band because it brings because really a live band brings the audience. <clears throat> it, it brings the more the audience in more. You can do more with the audience. You can interact with the audience. It brings a different feeling when you have a live band like. Like for instance, like whenever Mariah performs and she's not using a live band, I fucking hate the performance. I hate it. I hate p- artists who doesn't I mean, use a Mariah, live band. Mariah's music and Beyonce's music is set for live bands, but you but that's not, you know you can't say that because band. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne uses a live band. Drake uses a live band. Kendrick Lamar used a live band. And what's the other one? Or uh, Wiz Khalifa? He used a live band. Nicki Minaj uses used a live band for one of her tours. So just because they're doing hip hop and rap music doesn't mean they can't do a live band. Hell, even Jay Z has a live band. It's just the fact that when you use like a live is- band, it brings a new element to your performance. Like the like the instant pauses when you're going like this. There's some just those the little moments yeah. that bring more moments into your performances. I feel like I feel like a live band is good for when you're doing like a tour. A world tour, tour, but if you're doing like summer, like a little fest, like a little theater or summer fest, or no, like she's that, on tour. Megan, no, band. she was Megan The Stallion is on tour. Like summer fest was a stop on her tour. Like when Lady Gaga yeah, did, but, did, when but, Lady Gaga did the art raid, the art pop ball, that was an actual tour stop. Like the summer fest isn't yeah, it's just, it just a festival; like, it's an actual tour stop. It's like it's actually Lady part Gaga of the tour. Yeah, it was part well, of the world. world it was part of the world tour. Like when Blake Shelton and Megan stuff, didn't have it. Well, no, Megan's not. Megan, Megan, Megan is not doing tour. a world tour, but she's on tour right now. Because she left here and went to another state and did a whole other show. She's on tour right now. She's just Vegas. touring the U.S. She's still on tour. So it was just a stop. Yeah, she's not tour. Doing, she's not doing a huge arena. I feel like if you do, if you got, if you in a, a huge arena. Like a mega arena, like say like the Pfizer Forum or you know something like that. Then live band. If you're doing like amphitheater, like Summerfest, it's not as big as the Pfizer Forum. Actually, the amphitheater so, hold the amphitheater hold more people than Pfizer Forum. Pfizer Forum, Pfizer Forum, Pfizer Forum, Pfizer Forum only holds seventeen thousand people. The amphitheater can hold eighteen to twenty thousand people. Mm-hmm. With with the new updates and renovations. Yeah. Compared, like I said, Mariah even Mariah did the the what they call the Miller High Life Five concert, minutes. and she had a live band. Five you can have a live band Five. anywhere. Okay, you can have a live band anywhere. Yeah, but I think a live band sounds but like better said, in arena, not theater. But that is that is an arena. It's an outdoor arena. That's all it is. It's just an outdoor arena. Matter of fact, actually, matter of fact, Megan did. She did. Megan did have people on that stage. She had guitar. She had people on that stage with drums and shit. Matter of fact, she did. Because I, I don't know she, she did, what I had. I had because most of the time when I see her, she have like a DJ up there. Yeah, when matter of fact, now I think about it, Megan didn't have a DJ. 
the dude that came on before her had a DJ, but Megan had a band. Actually, she, she had a band. She had the drum people on drums and shit back there, so she and did have a live shit. band. She like, need to have it. Need to be something. Like I said, that's why. Like even even no matter what artist it is, to me, they just always got to have a live band. A, a live band always makes the performance one hundred percent better. I, I, I think about it. She did have a live band. Actually, I mean, yeah, she did. I mean, I've been to a ton of, ton of country music, and if you don't have that live band, I'm telling you what. Now, country music, yeah, they they, they need a live band because that's all. That's you know, you know um, I had watched uh, Luke Bryan. I didn't know he was such a good performer. Oh. I finally saw oh. some of his performers when, for performances from, when, like, from one of his tours. I'm like, he is fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I mean, yeah, guys, like I mean, there's been there's been a lot of people that do. I mean, even, even we can even talk like pop music. Like Gwen Stefani, she had a yes. band. You know, Gwen Stefani had a band back in the '90s, and they were hot. What was they, they? No were, doubt. They, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey. I don't know. They just need to bring back the era of live live music. I guess, but I guess we only got what less than five minutes left to wrap this up. We're gonna we're gonna make it out. So, Martel, would you please so, tell me your socials, homie? Well, first I gotta just remind everybody that you know, don't forget to get your same cast different day merch. I'm wearing the same cast different day podcast search if you're watching the video version. For those of you that's listening on the audio version, you can head uh you can head over to cafepress.com slash scdd podcast to get your official podcast merch. And if you want to see the shirts, I have the shirt on my uh Instagram page. It should be on the podcast instagram page along my personal instagram page and yeah <laughs> what was we supposed to be doing and no don't forget check out check out our website direct oh direct dot me slash, slash same cast, cast, different day. Day podcast. Okay. Crystal, you know you have to remind me of that so don't forget we have cafe press for your your apparel we have our website you can follow us on all our on all our social medias which include what are our, what are our social medias at at same cast different day sir uh for instagram it's gonna be same cast dfnt day on instagram and then you can follow it on facebook which is same cast different day podcast um i have gotten better so to for those of you who um want to know what's coming up on the next episode or you want to i post now at least a one minute clip of what's coming up on the next episode so make sure you guys be looking out for those clips. You can find them on YouTube or on my TikTok or the podcast Instagram page or the podcast Facebook page. And sometimes you might find them even on my TikTok. Clapper, Yay, your TikTok. I'll be, other... be sending Claire the tips. I'll be, I'll be sending Claire the, uh, the clips to everybody, but it take her like three days later to post them. <laughs> But uh, you can find me on the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, the TikTok, and the Clapper. All is at Marta Roland. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. You can find Crystal. Find me at my socials coming out at Facebook at Crystal B. You can check me out on TikTok, Clapper, and Instagram at Miss Carebear WI. By all means, add me, tell anyone of the three. And we will definitely get back to you. I, I do keep up on Instagram with same cast every day and on Facebook. So hit us up and we one of us will get back to you. You can also email us at our Gmail Gmail address, Martel. SCDD Podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to always send us a message. You can always message us at, at any one of the social medias. Follow us and direct at me. And don't forget, you can make your own direct at me website. Just go ahead and click on the link. By all means. And don't forget to check out our producer that you all heard throughout the show that was O Yeller on uh Facebook, Real Bench, and uh the Prince HR something something on on Twitter. So thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Saying Guys Different Day Podcast, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye everybody. Bye.